Every year we love to test Windows Defender against some of the most infamous ransomware. That's not nice. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. We're going to automate the execution of all of those threats on this test system, but we're also gonna do something else. Now, a lot of you mentioned in the comments that there are additional tools like Defender UI, that there are additional tweaks that you can make to Windows Defender in order to improve the protection against things like ransomware. So we're gonna try some of those tweaks and we'll see if it makes a difference. But first off, this is how Windows Defender comes by default, which is how most of you will have your systems configured. And we'll see what happens. Does our data get encrypted? Does our system get destroyed? We will find out right now. And the execution of all of these threats has begun and we're seeing some of them being blocked, some of them not blocked. You can see a live proactive detection on the screen as we're running these threats. So far, about 98% have been blocked, which means some have executed. We'll see if they manage to encrypt our data. One of them, as you can see, is blackclaw.ransom. That seems to be active and running. And if we take a look at our documents folder, our data is unfortunately encrypted. And if we open this uh, shortcut on our desktop, we will get the ransom note. All our files have been encrypted by Blackclaw ransomware. <laughs> this email, blackclaw at hitler.rocks. But more importantly, this is not a new threat. And in fact, if we do a search for Black Claw ransomware, as you can see, I've made a video about this three years ago. And even more strange is that the very next link is from Microsoft about Black Claw's thread description. And it seems to say that Microsoft Defender detects and removes this threat. But clearly, that's not what we saw here despite having a fully up-to-date version of Windows Defender. Now, this does seem to be a recurring behavior with Windows Defender, this unreliability of detection, not blocking threats that it should block. And I'm not absolutely sure why that is, but my best guess is that because it depends on the cloud and the sandbox for a lot of these detections, sometimes there's a delay in detecting the malware, which means it might be able to encrypt the files in the meantime. But regardless of the reason, the end result, unfortunately, is that if we try to open our files, we get greeted with, um, yeah, a bunch of what we like to call gibberish. Although Wikipedia's version of gibberish seems a lot cleaner than what we got. So maybe I should just say encrypted characters. But is there any way to improve this result? In order to find out, we have another system. And here I have Defender UI installed, which is just a simple tool that allows you to easily change settings inside Windows Defender. Again, a lot of you in the comments want to see this. Now, there are a lot of settings you can change, but I've tried to make the changes that would be most relevant to our test case, which is specifically the attack surface reduction rules. And I've turned on the option to use advanced protection against ransomware. We're also going to block untrusted and unsigned processes that run from USB. We've got a lot of these set to warn. So if we have execution of potentially obfuscated scripts, similarly turned on a lot of options here. And now we're going to rerun the test, the exact same test, and we shall see if we fare any better. Once again, we have started running all of our samples. This seems to have started off a lot slower than before, but we are seeing a better detection rate. And this time, it seems we have a proactive detection of 100%, which is uh, kind of what it should be for ransomware that's already well known. And as you would expect, when the ransomware is blocked, our data is not encrypted. So we actually have plays of Shakespeare here, which is poetic, the opposite of gibberish. It is worth noting that making changes to the way Windows Defender works can also have negative consequences, like increasing the resource utilization on your system, creating more false positives. So you could run legitimate applications, but they're blocked behaviorally because they're doing something that Windows Defender now blocks. But it's good to know that you can improve the protection using some of these ASR rules. Although I'm not sure what exactly contributes to this result, because we also have PUA protection turned on, block at first sight turned on, but I haven't touched the cloud protection level, which goes all the way up to high and zero trust. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comments below about these results. Have you experimented with ASR rules? Do you think it's worth turning them on for additional protection or do they get in the way? And don't forget to like and share this video if you found it interesting.
interesting. Now I also get a lot of questions about how I set up these tests and where I get my samples from. And that is where the sponsor of today's video, Any.Run, is very interesting. So in order to conduct threat research, set up these kinds of tests, one of the things you need is threat intelligence or in common term, malware samples. And online sandboxes like Any.Run are a great source for exactly that. As the name suggests, this site allows you to run any malware you want in their sandbox and collect all the data about it. And you can run it in the operating system of your choice all the way up to Windows 11 or even Linux. But because it's an online sandbox and people are constantly submitting samples to run, you can also search for the latest samples. For example, we can do a lookup for something like ransomware. So if we just say threat name ransomware and click on search, you can see the latest samples that have been detected by the sandbox as ransomware. So we've got some samples of WannaCry here, Maze ransomware. And if we just click on any of these, we can see the full analysis and we can actually see the sample execute in a virtual machine. We also have a full overview of the processes that it created, any network connections, and also the files that modified. So for example, here we can see, as you would expect, the ransomware is accessing and editing a lot of files and encrypting them. We can also see live screenshots of things like the ransom note. Now, any of you can test malware samples inside their sandbox simply by going to the link in description and signing up for free. But they're currently also doing a giveaway so the first 50 of you who sign up using this link in the description are going to get the enterprise version of their threat intelligence. So you can actually research and download samples. So if you're interested in threat research, definitely check them out using the link in description. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.